Hey, Black Cat here. The following build is something that you absolutely should not try. You'll understand a bit more once you see it, though. So, let's jump into it. So this is my Hex Blast Hierophant. I'm using the exact same Ascendancy that I was using before, just con Conviction of Power, Arcane Blessing, uh, Pursuit of Faith, and Ritual of Awakening. So, Totems, Power Charges, Endurance Charges, because they're always good, and Arcane Blessing. Admittedly, I am a little bit tempted to remove Conviction of Power, because I don't use the Power Charges really, for the most part. Actually, no, that's that's actually not true, because I do have 4% spell damage per Power Charge, though that's only 20% spell damage. I have some Crit Multi here per Power Charge, but it's only 20%. But I, I, am, I have been considering removing that, because... If I remove Conviction of Power, and I remove Ritual of Awakening, I can go over here from Divine Guidance to Sanctuary of Thought to allow me to add more auras. And then I can Forbidden Flesh and Flame to grab uh, the Ritual of Awakening again. Because Ritual of Awakening is actually a really cheap Forbidden Flesh and Flame, because almost no one gets it who... If, if you want Ritual of Awakening, usually you just go Templar and you just... Or just go uh, Hierophant and just get it. But in this case, it's actually, if you want to take Sanctuary of Thought, you can cut it out and then reallocate it with Forbidden Flesh and Flame just because it's so cheap. Uh, currently, I have Sanctuary allocated through that, so that does give me a lot of life regen, which I don't necessarily want to lose. But, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. This is how the Hex Blast build is meant to be set up here. I'll just go over it in order of uh, starting with the starting with the Passive Tree. So, as usual, when you start leveling this build, you allocate all of this. This is the main area, just the main cluster of things. They give you just nice little bits of little bits of everything. Damage, survivability, etc. As you head off, you'll head down here and up, rushing immediately to Ancestral Bond, because it is the most important thing in this entire build. Grabbing Primal Manifestation and the Totem Mastery that reduces the damage that you take because it takes from the totem's life inside of yours. Grab Purity of Flesh and its wheel. Grab Sovereignty and its wheel. Grab Arcane Capacitor only after you have already gotten Arcane Blessing, so after your first Sensi. Uh, you will want to grab Devotion at some point, just because the Devotion wheel is really strong. Grab Sanctuary of Thought much later, in general. We're going to be heading up here. We're going to be ignoring Arcane Potency because it isn't as strong. We are going to grab Heart of Darkness here, and the first thing you're probably going to grab is, just because it's cheap, the uh, level to all Chaos Gems, but you lose 10% of life and energy shield when you cast it. That I find that tends to be like a good way to start. Eventually, what we're going to be using is the 5% chance to apply maximum Wither Stacks, because that's going to be more. That's going to be very good later on. We have our Disciple of Forbidden, just to scale with our power charges we already have. Here is another minimum power charge, and another maximum here. We have Careful Planning here for Dexterity, I'll explain that later. We grab Crew Preparation, and very importantly, Mental Rapidity, because the cast speed here is really good. Heading backwards, this is when you'd be grabbing your Arcane Potency, your Sanctum, Sanctum of Thought, your Tireless Wheel, Going over here to Iron Will and Constitution. Then we start grabbing the Jewel Sockets. So we have a big cluster here. We have a Chaos Cluster, as you would expect. Wicked Paul, just for damage. Uh, Touch of Cruelty to hinder things, just for damage. And also gives a little bit of survivability by things not being as fast. And Unholy Grace, which really hits hard. Then we use that to go into our Chaos Dot Medium Cluster which has Septic Spells, which gives you a Poison Chance that isn't really all that valuable. It doesn't really matter. It's mainly for the cast speed, which actually is worth it, surprisingly. And then Eternal Suffering here, which is the most important of all of these Cluster Notables, which is the chance to inflict Wither when there's five or fewer Wither Stacks. That means that you can get up to effectively six Wither Stacks just by hitting things which is really important because Wither Stacks are a big deal. 
Currently we're sitting at 8.7 million down here at the full DPS. If we take off the wither stacks, we drop down to 7.1. About 15% of our damage just to have these six stacks. And if our Chaos Master triggers to bring it up to maximum stacks on one of those six, then we suddenly jump from 8.7 million to 11 million. Because Wither is extremely strong. It's also very hard to access, which is why it's so strong. Uh, I, I'm leaving at 6, though, because 6 we can reliably get on any notably strong mob that can withstand the hits. Then finally, we have the Snaring Spirits, which just hinders things even more. It's It works in conjunction with Touch of Cruelty quite well, because this hinders on crit, or sorry, hinders on hit, but that is rarer than just something being near my totems. So it's Touch of Cruelty and Snaring Spirits kind of synergize. Uh, Sleepless Sentries is a big damage boost because it gives you Onslaught, which also gives you movement speed as well as a lot of damage, which is really nice because this isn't really the fastest build. And then I just have the Forbidden Flesh and Flame over here in the Jewel Sockets. But of this entire thing, the first thing that you want to go for is to try to get this Chaos Dot Cluster. The large cluster and the totem medium cluster aren't nearly as valuable as this thing, because once you have this, you can get Eternal Suffering, which gives you Wither, and Wither is the most valuable of all of it. Then we have Apex Mode over here. This is mostly just a placeholder. It uh, is an extremely cheap jewel that gives 25% increased spell damage. That's all it exists for. It's not meant to be like anything crazy. It's not meant to synergize with any of the effects. It is literally just a stand in there because it is cheap and it gives damage. We're going to be looking into uh, ways to make that better though, because I'm sure there are some crit multi jewels that would be way, way better for it. Okay, now moving over to the items. So we have our Tripannon for 100% critical strike chance. We have our Sandstorm Visage to give us the 100% critical strike chance from Tripanton. Our chest plate is the Covenant, which is going to make us use up a lot of health doing this, but it gives a level 29 added chaos damage support. And Hex Blast has a 340% effectiveness of added damage. So all damage you add is multiplied by 3.4 times, which is pretty crazy because some skills only have like a point three instead of a point three or instead of a three four so that's a big big deal then we have found mrs weave which add gives us aspect of the spider which just it adds uh, spider webs to things that are nearby slowing them actually i think it actually hinders them i don't know if it's if if it's a hinder or just slow but it slows things down and you deal more damage as well as flat chaos damage which again scales very well we have our boots here, just uh, basic boots here for resistances. We have Marlene's Fallacy here, which gives us Charisma as well as uh, lots of crit multi. Uh, Charisma is just the mana reservation one over here. It's the biggest mana reservation node in the entire passive tree. Uh, I eventually want to remove this from the build if I can because it is bloody expensive. It's probably only 100 chaos in total for the anointment, which isn't all that bad. But I do try to decrease the price of my build as much as I can, and that is not the cheapest way to do it, probably. Then, I've been playing with either Mark of Submission, so Curse on Hit, versus Profane Proxy, which just anything that's near the Skitter bots gets hexed. The reason why I'm bouncing between the two of them is because... With Mark of Submission, the first hit will hit one thing, but it will not trigger the extra damage or the area damage. But it will mean that every single hit after that will trigger the area damage and the extra damage. Profane Proxy mean, will guarantee that you will hit that extra damage and that AoE damage immediately, almost every time. But Skitter Bots have a tendency to run away after they've add an ailment to something, and they'll go to the next pack, which means that if something strong withstands you, they have a tendency to not be there, and suddenly you're 
firing off hits to an unhexed enemy. Uh, the way around this is to use Profane Proxy and to corrupt your Phenomus' Weave to have a curse on hit, just any of the curse on hits, just to make sure that it is still getting that damage. Currently just has cast speed because cast speed is really powerful, but ultimately I'm trying to figure out which way to go with that. I'm not sure what's going to work best. Then we have the Magnate for just a fuck ton of damage. It's a million damage on its own. Uh, I am not hitting the triple damage level here, which is very unfortunate, and I'm trying to figure out if I can do that somehow, because if I can hit triple damage, this literally goes up by a million DPS. But I have to somehow fit an extra 163 strength into this build. That's a fucking lot. I need like four separate items with suffixes with strength suffixes on them to do that. Just like if I'm just using rare gear, so I don't really know how the fuck I can manage that. Still working the kinks out on this one, so that might change. We'll, we'll see how that works. I still have it running though, because it is still best in slot despite the fact I don't have access to the triple damage, because the Magnate is just a ridiculous, just a really ridiculous item. Then we just have our various flasks. So life flask, mana flask, uh, we have a granite flask for armor, sulfur flask for damage and cast speed, and we have a tincture here, which gives us culling strike as well as chaos damage pen. We also have hit steel frenzy charges, which it's not reliable, but if let's say you're in a map where there's something that creates frenzy charges, well, we're at 8.7 million damage right now. Let's see what happens when we add our three frenzy charges. 10.3. It's a 1.6 million damage increase if that happens. So it's an empty modifier that doesn't really have a better option to put there. So just having that for like the rare extra 15-20% damage to the entire build is totally worth it in my opinion. And you can, if you really think a map's going to be challenging to you, add a uh, monster's gain frenzy charges on hit to the map. And that is dangerous because that means they'll hit you harder, but also you'll steal them from them. So, a bit of a high risk, high reward there. I've already gone over most of the gems here. Then we have a careful planning here to make sure that we have enough decks. So the, real the reason why I have careful planning here, despite the fact that technically our decks requirement is 70, so that brings us up to 137, is we have two different things here. We have hypothermia and we have void manipulation. Uh, when we're using Avoid Manipulation, we deal more damage, it's 8.7 million. When we use Hypothermia, it's 8.2 million, so it's 500,000 less damage. And it also suddenly costs 111 decks versus 70 decks. So the reason why you'd pick Hypothermia, despite it doing less damage and having a more annoying dex requirement, is that Avoid Manipulation does not give you elemental damage. So if you, let's say, have a friend who has, I don't know, a flame link support, then you can't get any benefits from that when you're using void manipulation. So, I have specifically added hypothermia here so that I can group play with people who I play with, just as an extra thing. Technically, if you don't care about that, you can just ignore the dex requirement entirely and just go void manipulation, which is what I intend to do when I'm not, when I'm playing solo. So I'm leaving on void manipulation because that's technically what most people will be doing. And then I have Inspiration here as well. It's not allocated. I'm not sure if I want to keep it. The main reason is that it's 147 mana per cast for the totems and 272 life per cast for the totems. So they hit very fucking hard. Like they hit your life and mana very hard just to spawn them. So you have to be really careful with them. And I have considered allocating Inspiration which decreases the mana cost to like make it easier to run with other auras, but that increases the life cost by a lot. Also, it decreases the damage a lot, because Inspiration doesn't really benefit this build, seeing as we don't need more crit chance and we don't do elemental damage generally. Even if we have a support with us that does Flame Link, still, this elemental damage still isn't, is nothing. Okay, now that we've gone over the items, we will properly go over the skills now.
So this is still a work in progress. This is still version one. I'm going to have more versions after this. But for version one, we have uh, a four link here with flame dash, faster casting, portal, and wither. Wither is so that you can self cast wither onto bosses if they happen to be focused on your totems and you have a chance just a second to cast them or just a second to cast it because this will allow you to actually put the stacks above six wither stacks and if you can even get let's say two wither stacks on it that way let's say it's already sitting at six so you're, cause your totems and you want to add two extra wither stacks because you have a, a, literally a one second to cast your damage goes from 1.7 or 8.7 million to 9.2 that's 500,000 damage just by, like, casting for a sing literally a single second. So whether is there as an option, uh, stopping and casting a channeling skill in the middle of a boss fight is, is often a bad idea, so I don't have it set as a reliable thing. And also, you wouldn't really have it during mapping and stuff, for the most part, just because, I mean, usually you're going fast in mapping and you drop a totem and run. But it will help you with the more stubborn things. Then we have a two socket here. These are not linked up, does not matter. Technically, none of this stuff needs to link, uh, except for like faster casting and wither really are the only things that really need to be linked together. So you technically, you can have a two link six socket and be just fine. I have these four things linked together because it's pretty easy to get a four link generally. And it's nice to have faster casting on flame dash and portal. And then the guard skill is separate and the same as with blight. Vol Blight is here just, or Blight's here just for Vol Blight. And any enemy that you hit with Chaos Damage takes 20% more damage with Vol, once Vol Blight has hit. So that's just there as a um, debuff to enemies and a buff to you. And then Molten Shell because you have Molten Shell on your left click. Then we have our Auras. I have Righteous Fire here. You can just pop on Vol Righteous Fire if you want. It gives. 1.6 million dps so it's really strong but it is also scary to pop vol righteous fire as always then we have determination and summon skitter bots with enlightened support because this this build like really suffers from mana reservation efficiency so that's also part of the reason why i'm considering going over here with the ascendancy and grabbing sanctuary of thought and then forbidden flesh and flame to ritual awakening because if i have sanctuary of thought I can remove probably both the Enlightenment Lighten, and the Charisma uh, Anointment. And there is a much better Anointment that I could put on it that would do a lot more damage, which is Surveillance. Which is all the way down over here, right here. Nope, that's not done. Just Surveillance. Does 30% totem damage, and totems apply 1% increased damage to taking enemies near it, so... 5% increased damage taken because there's 5 totems around them and 30% increased totem damage. It's just generally a good thing. The other option is also Disciple of Slaughter, which is very fucking strong. Outright... Oh, actually, Outright it's only a little bit weaker than Surveillance, so it's probably better, plus it gives you a chance to get more Frenzy Charges. So that is also a really, really, really good option that I could pick up instead of uh, taking Charisma. That does mean we lose a bunch of our life regen because we'd be dropping Sanctuary and the Consecrated Ground, as well as a bit of our damage, but... Eh. <laughs> this entire thing is about trade-offs. You find the, the best trade-offs that give you the best mix of things. And being that this is only version 1, this build will keep getting better. So we're going back to skills. We finally have our Hex Blast here. So we have Hex Blast with Spell Totem support because it's a totem. We have multiple totem support because it's a totem. Then we have increased critical damage support because we already have a maximum crit chance. So crit multi is the most important thing to us right now. Cruelty, just because more damage with hits. And then the void manipulation hypothermia, which I talked about earlier, which you can swap between. Most people will be using void manipulation only unless they have a support who gives them elemental damage. Then we just have Despair, that's been plunked into uh, the Mark of Submission slash Profane Proxy, depending on whichever one that ends up being picked. We have Bark Skin, which comes from our Warren Ascendancy, and Aspect of the Spider, which comes from Venomous Weave. So here's our Warren over here. We've just taken Oath of the Magi. We have no sockets in our gloves or boots, so we have 20% increased maximum life and 30% increased movement speed. We have Coated Blade for Tinctures, which is the Culling Strike Tincture we have. We have Wildwood Blessing for the aforementioned Bark Skin. 
and Lesson of the Seasons, which I am very excited for. For each bark that you are below maximum, so if you've been hit a bunch, you have a 10% chance per bark you are below maximum to avoid non-damaging ailments. So that's Scorched, Chilled, Frozen, Brittle, Shock, Sapped. And then just per bark, so if you have uh, just full bark, you have a 100% uh, reduction of damaging ailments. So you can't be bled, ignited, or poisoned if you are at 10 bark. Or sorry, 100% reduced for duration. So even if you get hit once and that hit is the bleeding, igniting, or poisoning hit, it still has only a 10% of its duration. So it makes you not immune to status ailments, but it's very, very fucking strong. I've played with other other secondary ascendancies, but as far I just like Warden. I just do. It's really hard to replace it. Okay, so... That is the build guide for Revision 1. I will be releasing a Revision 2 in the near future, probably on Thursday realistically, because I'm very avidly working on this, because it's extremely fun. Because <laughs> I love build crafting, it's my favorite part of the game. That's the build. If you like this content, please like and subscribe, and ring the bell for more notifications of when my content comes out. And comment down below if you have any ideas for future videos. I'd love to hear what you all think. Bye all!